coastal locations in the 60s. So, Duran, you love being a meteorologist. Yeah. Could you see yourself doing it for 50 years? That's a long time. Yeah, you know, I, think long I, could. Time. I think I could do it. Notice you uh, didn't answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> Our body language expert picking up on your tone. All right, one woman in New York loved her job so much she spent 58 years doing it, and she never looked to leave. Check it out. This is Mona Zippe. She became an independent insurance adjuster at Dorner Adjustment in 1955. Wow. 58 years later, she decided eh, it was time to retire. The secretary outlived her boss, John M. Dorner, and even remembers when women were not allowed to wear pants to work. Throughout all her time at Dorner Adjustment, Zippe said she never looked for another job. Honestly, that's quite unheard of. According to recent data, the average person will change careers five to seven times during their working life. And get this, about 30% of the total workforce will change jobs every 12 months. The Bureau of Labor says age matters. Statistics show the average worker currently holds 10 different jobs before age 40, and that number is projected to grow. In the meantime, Forrester Research predicts today's youngest workers will hold 12 to 15 jobs in their lifetimes. Mm. All right, Blanca, you are with us to be part of this discussion. If someone, say, is unhappy in the job that they've had for either a short time or a long time, what are some positive ways to approach that? They have to figure out what is it that's making them unhappy. And then you have to evaluate. Is it as a short-term problem or a long-term problem? Because look, sometimes you can have stresses with a, a colleague or a, a project, but that's short-term. It can go away. So you really have to figure it out and figure out what it is that you can change about it and be very objective. So let's say you want career advancement and you feel like there aren't a lot of opportunities. Well, see if you can have a conversation with your boss about that. Right. Or sometimes the problem might be outside of work, right? And, and Absolutely. you're unknowingly bringing it into the work environment. That's a really good that point that you bring lot. up. It's, yeah. it's really hard to separate home from work or work right. from home. So you're right. If you're stressed about something else that's going on in your yeah. life, that could cloud what's going on at work. Mm -hmm. Again, it's going back to what I said earlier. Is it a short-term problem or is it a long-term? You know, when somebody, um, and everybody knows these people, that they, they're so unhappy in their job, but they're mm -hmm. probably not going to make a change. They're, like, stuck. And when that negative attitude starts to bleed over into everything else, what can you do as a coworker or maybe an employer to try to help that person through that? I think it starts with the person because it is that person's responsibility. It is your responsibility to make sure you're doing your job. That's what you're there for. Yeah. And if you can't, then you're letting not only yourself down, but your colleagues down, your boss down, and the company down. You're not going to have longevity in that position. Now, if you need help or if you notice, I think a great thing that colleagues can do is say, you know, hey, what, I'm noticing something. Is there anything that's going on? How can I can help? I help? Yeah. How can yeah. I help? Because sometimes it's just an ear. They just want somebody to listen. Other yeah. times it might be some action. And if they're telling you something that you can't help, then it, who in the company can help them make that change? See, I get aggravated when someone says, I hate my job and they don't look. I'm like, then mm -hmm. look and find something else. Exactly. Like, I, I'm not, you know, I, I get if you're unhappy. There have been jobs that I've been unhappy at. Then make it make it change mm -hmm. there or get out and go somewhere else. That's you know? right. Complaining isn't going to change anything. Right. It's action. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But speaking of looking, say you are wanting to look. I'm sure someone at home is considering mm -hmm. wanting to leave their current employer and look elsewhere. How do they have that conversation with their boss? First, if you're really serious, I advise you find another job before you tell your boss. <laughs> that would because, be smart. Yes, because as soon as you tell, they can be, all right, thank you, bye. Yeah. Right? Well, they they yeah. quits now. Yeah. Right, right, they absolutely could. Or if you're going to tell your boss, you need to be very objective, keep the emotion out yeah. of it, and just say, look, this is what I'm noticing at work. I'm not as creative or I'm not, a, I'm not a, I don't feel like I'm able to expand or have a different role because of X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that we can work on this together? Listen to what your boss says. What happens a lot of times is people just get so fed up and then they walk into the boss's office and like, I'm done. They right. explode. They yeah, do. Yeah. Instead of actually having a conversation, listen to what the boss has to say, see if there's a way you can work on it that you can still be happy and get what you want out of your job. And those days when you're most upset are usually not the right time to talk. You gotta go home, sleep on it, compose yourself, and then yes. go in there the next day. And that leads me to another thought, yeah. Megan, is that when you're home, when you're outside of work, you have to find ways to handle that stress or right. that unhappiness. So whether it's exercise, talking to a friend, getting enough sleep, Figure it out. You have to figure it out for yourself because you do, uh, like I said earlier, you have that responsibility. 
to come in and do the best work that you can. Yeah. You're in charge of your own happiness. Nobody yeah, else that's is. That's right. That's true. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Blanca. We appreciate it. Um, we're going to talk about something else right now in case you're unhappy. Stop. Just stop. Just take a deep breath. <laughs> we're going to move on because right now they're going, yeah, Blanca, tell them. Uh, here's the deal.